Is Dwan Mathis the answer for the dogs? I've got that and a lot, lot more. Georgia coming out as a 24 and a half point favorite over Arkansas here today, and that number's already moved up. I'll tell you what I think about that and more. Stick with me for the entire time. Dean Leggy from Dog Post, making you a smarter Georgia fan. I will be at the game on Saturday. This is going to be pretty ch different for all of us, uh, covering the team as well as all, all of y'all watching at home. And one of the biggest things that could be different is you could see a dual threat quarterback starting for Georgia, specifically for Quincy, uh, for uh, Kirby Smart, uh, for the first time since, you know, shock. Um, and, and to some degree, uh, Quincy Carter. Um, if you want to call Aaron Murray a dual threat guy, I'm not going to hate you. Um, but he was not a dual threat guy after he about got his head knocked off Tennessee 2010. So Mike Bobo and Mark Rick put an end to that. Um, this is a moment in Georgia history that could change the trajectory of the program. You can say that a lot. You can say that most seasons, um, but most seasons are not like this one. And in a year where, you know, obviously there's a lot going on with the pandemic. There's a lot of social and political unrest in the country. People are figuring out what they have to have and what they no longer need to deal with. And I think we're going to see right now if Georgia really does need to transition at quarterback for good. And that's where Dwan Mathis comes in. Um, for Georgia coming in, you know, you, you listen to David Pollock during the summer. Um, he was a, a big believer in um, Jamie Newman. Well, Jamie Newman's gone. And then, it, you know, it looks like it's going to be JT Daniels. And it still could be JT Daniels. Uh, but then all of a sudden, um, if you want to put it like that, here comes Dwan Mathis, and you know, in my time covering Georgia, you get to know a lot of different people in and around the program, and they were they were convinced that Dwan Mathis was probably the most gifted um, quarterback, I guess, but certainly the most athletically gifted of the guys that they had, even when Jamie Newman was around. But the problem for Dwan Mathis, I think, was you know he's not really played football in a meaningful way. Certainly, like this, fighting for a starting job in some time, with the brain uh, brain surgery, etc. There's been a lot that Mathis has gone through. What happened that made him surge? Um, what's been the case here? Is it been that Newman's gone and now that's opened the door for Mathis? Is it that J.T. Daniels is not yet cleared? Is it that the Bulldogs have, you know, taken the sample size of the offense and, and, and moved it down towards something that a guy that's playing this first year of college football really could accelerate in? There's a lot of questions right now. And, you know, is Dwan Mathis the answer is just one of them. That's the biggest and most broad question. And I don't know if we know if he's the answer because I think it totally depends on what the question is. If you're okay with making mistakes, but growing and kind of going for it, he might be your guy. But you've got to be willing, this is the hard part, you've got to be willing to lose a game. Possibly two, but by the end of the season, maybe you can still win the conference championship. That's got to be your mindset um, if you were to go with Mathis and Mathis wins out. Because when you look at this schedule... It's manageable, but it's tough at the start. I mean, you could lose to Auburn, you could lose to Alabama, and certainly you could lose to the Gators. Those are three games that there's no no you know certainty that Georgia wins. And you know, obviously, last year proves that Georgia can lose in an upset as well. We hadn't really seen that under Kirby's teams. So with Mathis, how much are they going to rein him in? The ability to make plays is something that Georgia has always wanted from their quarterback, I think, more than they got. When you think about the 2017 season, Drake Fromm wasn't really asked to do a lot until later in the year. And, and even then, against Auburn, that was rough on the road. But from that point forward, he really moved on and became a better player against Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl. He was the reason they tied the game at the end of that game. I and mean, that was Jake Fromm. 
So they slowly developed him. And then 2018 was his best year at Georgia. And he was being pushed by Justin Fields, who is either going to win the Heisman or go in the top 10 this year in the NFL draft. He's at Ohio State now. And because he's at Ohio State, Juan Mathis signed with Georgia coming into the 2019 season. But when Mathis had the brain injury, that was it, basically, for him playing that year. He just got too far behind, and he basically dealt with the scout team. Here comes Jamie Newman. Here comes JT Daniels. There goes Jamie Newman. And now suddenly, with the addition of Carson Beck, you've got three guys who are fighting for this starting job who have never played a down in the SEC and who, you know, Mathis knows this team better than all the rest of them because he's been around it for 18 months or so, whatever it's been. That has to matter a little bit too. If, though, we see the combination that I think we will see, which is part Dwan Dwan Mathis, part um, Todd Munkin, you could see a very different and much more explosive Georgia offense. All of this is caveat, or caveated, I guess. I don't even know if that's a word. All of this is with the caveat that we don't really know what's going on with JT Daniels and his injury. That has been very hard to narrow down. Um, It is totally possible that he could go in and start. It is totally possible that Mathis could go in and start. I'd say it's more probable that Mathis would start. It is pretty low possibility, but possible that Beck could start. I don't see that happening. Um, But we don't have a full understanding of these players because, A, we've had so limited, well, we have non-existent uh, practice watching. On top of that, it's hard to trust the information that people like I get right now because... So much has changed over this eight-week period. And even with people that you trust, you have to wonder, you know, do they truly, truly know? But I think if Mathis is what we expect him to be, Georgia could change in a way that is permanent, which is to say you would have a quarterback who would make you pay with their legs as well. I will add that that would include Carson Beck as well as Stetson Bennett as well as Brock Vandegriff. I'll have some Brock Vandegriff highlights later this week. That does not necessarily uh, include JT Daniels. My suspicion going into this Arkansas game, Georgia 20 to 25 point favorite, is that we'll see multiple quarterbacks. I am curious to see who starts, Who plays the bulk of the snaps? Is Daniels healthy? And what do Mathis and Beck look like if and when they get in there? How will this offense be? Is it going to be spread them out and then run? Because you've got some pretty good running backs on this team. All of these things are important. And you should know by halftime what you're really getting. Other questions that people wonder out loud. Is Kirby turning this whole thing over to Todd Munkin or not? There's a lot, there are a lot of questions still to be answered. <laughs> is Dwan Mathis the answer is, is a question that needs to be answered for sure as well. Take a look at these highlights of Brock Vandegriff, and we'll see you Fayetteville Saturday and throughout the week on our videos here on Dog Post.